Global Illumination, or GI, is a fascinating new development in the world of real-time rendering for CG and game engines, and it has now come to iClone 7. Essentially what GI does is it simulates lights bouncing off different surfaces in your scene, in order to get a more accurate indirect lighting in your overall environment. You'll see more about this as we get through the video. In previous versions of iClone, users would need to apply multiple lights in various areas of the scene in an attempt to generate a similar effect, which would not only take tons of time, but also is nowhere near as accurate. In this scene, we have objects inside a Cornell box, which is a standard test scene used to test the accuracy of rendering software. You'll see right away that the indirect light in the environment is not even present when the GI is turned off, which makes a huge difference right off the bat. Glowing particle effects will also be emissive now with GI, a huge development that is worlds beyond what is available in previous versions of iClone. Notice a significant difference in realistic scene lighting when GI is turned off and on here. And it's not only glowing particle effects, but also emissive light from images as well. In this scene, the courtyard's background is a simple image plane. Before GI, that emissive value from the image would not affect the brightness of surrounding objects, but now you can see that we can use it to cast a soft and natural light on the entire interior of our scene. Emissive video can also be used, as you can see in this scenario with a TV subtly lighting up a darkened room. Notice how accurate even the different lights of the TV are on the floor reflection. Here is another great example of an outdoor scene where global illumination is essential to getting more accurate scene lighting that allows us to see details within the shadows. Let's take a look at how this works in iClone. First what I'll do is turn off all the auxiliary lights in my scene from the top menu, and then reactivate only the key light of my scene. If we go to my camera side view, you'll notice that the light is now shining on a white cube and a yellow rear wall, but there is no reflection of the light on any of the surfaces, until we turn on the Viewport GI from the top menu bar. This diagram here will explain a little better what's going on. When the white light that enters our scene hits the cube and side walls, it will reflect off them and fill the room with a much softer white light. This is called indirect light. You can see a better example of this when the light is reflected off the yellow rear wall. If you take a close look at the sphere, you can see that the regular light is reflected off the yellow wall and in turn casts a yellowish indirect light on the rear of the sphere. Basically, the only reason the wall appears yellow and reflects yellow light back at the sphere is that yellow is the only color frequency not absorbed by this particular wall. So when simulating the way light behaves in the real world, we have to remember it's not the object itself that is yellow, but the light frequency that is not absorbed and reflected back to our eyes and onto other objects. Video cards have become powerful enough to make these calculations in real time, giving us the ability to use GI to get infinitely more realistic indirect lighting in our scene. There are two factors that will influence GI, distance and light bounce strength. For the distance factor, you'll notice that when I move the sphere around the scene, different reflections of light will appear stronger or weaker on its surface. The further away it is from the yellow wall means the yellow reflection will fade. If we want to adjust the light bounce strength of a surface, we can do so by using the eyedropper tool to select the material of that wall then going down to GI settings to adjust the light bounce strength. If we pump that value up, you'll see a large amount of light will be reflected off that surface, making it appear very reflective, almost like a mirror. Now because the GI effect can be very hardware intensive, we recommend at least having a graphics card based on the NVIDIA VXGI. You'll need a GTX 970 with 4GB of memory or above, with an Intel i5 dual core CPU or higher, and 8GB of system RAM. If you have older GPU hardware, you'll need to turn off the real-time GI viewport rendering for smoother editing performance. For more information, we recommend checking out NVIDIA's official website here. That's about it for this tutorial. GI is a fairly new technology, but its potential for use in iClone and other real-time rendering tools of the future is enormous.